moon crystal power <laughs> make uh Wonder Woman! Well hey there, how you doing? Welcome back to Mr. Larry's Craft Show. Thank you for joining me again. Thank you guys so much for being so kind and for enabling my ridiculous antics on this channel. It could not happen without you. <laughs> it, we all know it happens a lot without you, actually. But I love myself, and that's all that matters. <laughs> And thank you for checking out last week's video. I had such a great time making that. I'm so proud of it. I think it's some of my finest work. If you haven't checked it out yet, go look at last week's video and then come back to this one. Our project today is gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna be customizing our very own coasters using some alcohol-based inks. This is a new medium to me. I'm not familiar with it, but I have had a little bit of fun playing with it, and I think you will too. Hey! hey. <laughs> I'm really glad we could get together because I feel like I haven't talked to another human being in forever. I have no idea yeah, I what I would totally even know like you mean. say. I'd I... probably just be like, just be like wow, I'm just gonna go. Yeah, I think that will be best. Okay. Because ain't here. While I would never be so rude to a guest in real life, I have been accused of leaving a ring on a friend's coffee table back in high school. And let me tell you, that devastated me. That broke my heart. Me? Me, me, me. Since then I've recovered though, so. Me, I'm like the only friend who even can, you know what, Never mind. it's over. Who was waking up early in the morning cleaning up after everybody so the parents wouldn't come over all mad? <laughs> so today we'll look at making our very own customized coasters using some ceramic tiles. We'll use a couple of other different materials and then we're gonna try out some alcohol inks and then we're gonna try this other technique using Sharpies. So stay tuned for that and let's get into our three things because you know I got three things for you. Starting with thing number one. The origin of coasters is no great mystery. People essentially just wanted to stop messing up their tables with condensation. Around 1760, the use of small shallow dishes made of wood, paper, or silver became commonplace. These were intended to help move or coast decanters or bottles of wine around a table when servants weren't in action. In Western culture, the coaster can be compared in its use to the classic combination of cup and salsa. Skip ahead to 1880, where small mats made of cork and cardboard are being used to advertise ale and beer. Since then, the coaster has flourished worldwide, finding both practical and creative successes along the way. And that brings us to thing number two. Speaking of alcohol, I'm sorry, I did not have a good transition. <laughs> alcohol inks are, as the name suggests, highly pigmented inks made in alcohol. In the last few years, I've seen these really vivid abstract works of art pop up all around and on some very interesting surfaces. Alcohol pigments dry rapidly, which makes them ideal for use on very smooth, glossy surfaces like glass, ceramic tiles, and metal. If you're familiar with watercolor, there is a similarity in its execution and also often in its final appearance. But working with alcohol inks can be incredibly unpredictable, especially if you're a novice like me. This makes it a little messy and kind of fun. And that brings us to thing number three. Considering that it's me we're still talking about, it probably won't get that messy. In fact, we're gonna be working on ways to reduce mess in your living space by creating our own custom set of alcohol ink coasters. I have a variety of materials that we'll try, we'll experiment with Sharpies, which are also an alcohol-based ink. Now, I'm not gonna say that like a scurple won't work. <laughs> Y'all know, <what laughs> know what a scurple is, right? Just look up, just a scurple. <laughs> I don't know if this is maybe just a thing from back where I'm from, but we had this like thrift store that had all these fake versions of things that you would buy and their version of Sharpie was scurple. 
<laughs> and I don't know why, it's just the funniest name I've ever heard in my life. And then we'll use some of the alcohol ink that I've purchased here. And then I'll show you how to keep it protected so that it can protect you. And by you, I mean your table. Um, and then, uh, yes. So for our first variation of this project, we will take a simple box of Sharpies um, or Skirples <laughs> and color a design onto a ceramic tile. Keep in mind that whatever you put on here is going to be highly distorted by the time we're finished. For instance, you can see the one that I've started over in this little side video, side video, one of the sides, where I've drawn in with Sharpie and then simply sprayed it with 90% alcohol, which I have in this little spritz bottle. And the reason why I have so little is because I was ill-prepared. I tried the 70% alcohol to see if it would work. And as you can see, it did not. I ultimately just ended up wiping the whole thing clean, which is a benefit of working with alcohol. It cleans up very easily. So I'm gonna color in a pattern and then we'll place it in this tray and I'll spritz it with alcohol. I'll then show you what it looks like when you allow it to dry naturally over several hours versus what happens when you set it on fire. So let's try it out. So one of the things that I noticed other crafters doing is that you have to have a lot of pigment on the tile. And once we start adding in the alcohol, you'll see what I mean. The color behaves very strangely. <laughs> so it's, it's a really weird thing to try and control. Y'all know me. I like a nice Miami, Florida circa 1989 color combination whenever possible. <laughs> Me too. If you wanna make sure you don't get any ink on your table, you could always work on your coaster on a coaster. So here is my tile. So now I'll show you what it looks like when we add the alcohol. So you can use a spritz bottle, you can take a paintbrush, uh, you can use a dropper. I might try a combination of these this time. like that. Cause I wanna get some of those little galactic looking flecks in there. Yeah, that's something. We can also use air. I have a little air blower that we can use to sort of just push this ink around a little bit. Again, this is not about control so much as it might look because this really is randomized. Even if you're putting the tip of the blower right where you think you want it to go, the air can go anywhere. This is starting to look like something that I really like now. So in one of the videos I saw, they, can, they, they set the alcohol with fire. Once the alcohol is, is all where you want it to be, you simply light it and then it will quickly evaporate, but it will be inflamed while it does that. It happens very quickly. And if you're in a controlled space like mine, you should be fine. I don't recommend you do this at home necessarily, especially if you're not with a parent or you're not an adult. It does produce a really cool <laughs> result, so I don't know. This was a Sharpies marble thing, but I'm not a huge fan, so I'm gonna color on top of it. And this time I'm going to use the inks. I have a variety of colors. I got some neons. I even have a metallic. You can use these directly out of the bottle or you can use them with a paintbrush or a dauber. Then you apply the blending solution to move the colors around, to merge them together, to remove color. These inks do stain your hands. I do recommend wearing gloves. I just wanna kind of encourage it in a more specific direction than just in a drop. Because what happened last time is when I dropped these inks directly onto the thing and then applied some alcohol, it immediately went black. All the color mixed together. Ultimately, it came out kind of interesting, but I definitely got to a point of despair where I didn't know what was happening. So I, I wanted to try something a little less uh, full steam ahead. <laughs> this time I'm gonna drop with the blending solution, which is recommended for this ink. I'm gonna do the same dots. Ooh. Okay, that's cool. And remember, like I said, this is gonna re-wet whatever is already there also. I'm taking some of this blending solution, which is not the same as the alcohol we just used, into my pipette so that I can squirt it out in smaller little beads, maybe? Oh yeah. Yeah! I think I'm gonna spritz this one too. Oh, I don't, yeah, because then it'll like, it's really gonna be like melt together. 
Just like one spritz though, okay? Because if I mess this up, I'm gonna be real disappointed. Or I'll just make another one, whatever. <laughs> okay. Ah! Okay, that's it. Yeah. Oh, that's gonna be cool. One more. Um, Larry, stop it. Okay. Um, <laughs> I also don't think my table is level. Oh, somebody help me. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Yes. That's it. <gasps> okay, so I just sucked up some ink that was already on here, squirted that back out so I could get those little flecks, because y'all know I love my little flex, my little texture, and it's exactly what I was hoping for. We'll do another one on ceramic, and this time we'll light it on fire. I don't recommend moving your tiles while they're drying. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> okay, ceramic tile. I'm gonna do a combination of applying the ink directly here and then dripping it on from the bottle. The bottle. I promise y'all, I promise y'all this is gonna be cool. This is all about experimentation and it's why it's so much fun, y'all. I got a lot of these inks on sale, so. Head on down to the stove. Safety is number one priority. I'm gonna spritz. Do it. Maybe I didn't have enough. Oh, 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 it's on fire. Oh, it's on fire! Oh, it did it. Let me get these other pieces. I guess because I didn't do like a complete pour on top, it didn't do like a full tall flame from the center, but rather just sort of burned little individual pools at a time, which is fine because it still gave me a really cool result. I'll share a link to the video that I was trying to emulate though, so you can see what I'm talking about and know that I am not crazy. And this is, Beautiful. I'm gonna set this one down so that they can all dry overnight. No, it's not over. I'm gonna try, I wanna try one more time, y'all. And if this doesn't work out, nobody has to see it. Do, 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 do. Whatever. Because, what up? Glasses. This time something's gonna happen. I'm scared, y'all. Here we go. Woo! <laughs> there it is! Yes! Oh my. <laughs> that was so cool! <laughs> it smells toasty. Wow! It's so pretty. But I mean, it's really dark because it's all burnt up, but. Oh! <laughs> That's fun. Okay, now we're gonna let all these dry overnight and then look at how to protect them for all of time. I have sprayed each of my coasters with this Rust-Oleum Clear Varnish. This is a high gloss UV protectant and it's really important that whatever you top coat your coasters with has a UV protection because these inks are not light fast. Some people simply coat them with several layers of Mod Podge. This stuff will interact with the ink a little bit even when it's completely dry. So just be aware, don't load it up too quickly and just give yourself some time to build those layers up until you get a nice glossy, glassy finish. As an added layer of protection, I'll add felt onto the back of my coaster and I'll start by gluing it down using this quick grip. I'm pulling the glue out toward the edge. That way the felt won't start lifting up at the corners. Oh my God, these are so pretty. <laughs> and I really feel that this extra step or these extra steps really help them feel finished and then also increase their functionality. So with the help of our friend here, the spray sealant, some simple household felt, we were able to turn our coaster project into a completely finished functional coaster 
that you will be more than proud to have on any table in your house. I hope that soon we will see the fruits of our labor over the last several years and waiting and working and pushing towards better. This pandemic will end and we will be able to enjoy each other's company with the help of our lovely coasters. And as long as we are all working toward that goal and staying safe, I think 2021 will be a wonderful year. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend ahead of you. Until next time, stay safe and stay crafty. Bye.